let's start with the, the video of the pore pressure and fracture pressure. Parameters in designing and drilling a well for oil and gas are the well's pore pressure gradient and fracture gradient. This animation shows how pore pressure and fracture gradients change as one drills deeper. Okay, please uh, have a look on this video. I will ask you later on what is pore pressure and fracture in your words. Into the earth and how drillers use drilling mud to manage subsurface pressure. Pore pressure is the pressure exerted by fluids within the pore space of rock. That pressure is generated by the weight of the rocks and fluids above the pore zone. When drillers encounter a zone of porous hydrocarbon bearing rock, the pore pressure will force oil and gas out of the rock and into the well unless the drillers do something to counter that pressure. Drillers use drilling fluids, including drilling mud, to counterbalance the pore pressure. They adjust the weight of the column of mud inside the well so that it generates pressure at the bottom of the well that equals the pore pressure within the rock. This keeps the well in balance. Drillers measure the pore pressure in terms of the density of the mud column that would be required to balance that pressure. A plot of this pressure, expressed in terms of pounds per gallon as a function of depth, is called the pore pressure gradient. If the pressure of the mud column above a porous zone is less than the pore pressure, then the well is underbalanced. Sections of an underbalanced well can collapse and formation fluids can flow into the well from the surrounding rock. An uncontrolled flow of oil and gas into a well is called a kick. If drillers do not recognize and control a kick quickly, the kick can lead to a blowout like the one at Macondo. Like any natural material, rock will break or fracture under enough pressure. If the pressure of the mud column above a rock formation is high enough to fracture that formation, drilling mud will flow out of the well bore and into the formation instead of returning to the surface. This causes what is known as lost returns or lost circulation. I'll repeat it once again. And then I'll Two of the most important parameters in designing and drilling a well for oil and gas are the well's pore pressure gradient and fracture gradient. This animation shows how pore pressure and fracture gradients change as one drills deeper into the earth and how drillers use drilling mud to manage subsurface pressure. Pore pressure is the pressure exerted by fluids within the pore space of rock. That pressure is generated by the weight of the rocks and fluids above the pore zone. When drillers encounter a zone of porous hydrocarbon bearing rock, the pore pressure will force oil and gas out of the rock and into the well unless the drillers do something to counter that pressure. Drillers use drilling fluids, including drilling mud, to counterbalance the pore pressure. They adjust the weight of the column of mud inside the well so that it generates pressure at the bottom of the well that equals the pore pressure within the rock. This keeps the well in balance. Drillers measure the pore pressure in terms of the density of the mud column that would be required to balance that pressure. A plot of this pressure, expressed in terms of pounds per gallon as a function of depth, is called the pore pressure gradient. If the pressure of the mud column above a porous zone is less than the pore pressure, then the well is underbalanced. Sections of an underbalanced well can collapse and formation fluids can flow into the well from the surrounding rock. An uncontrolled flow of oil and gas into a well is called a kick. If drillers do not recognize and control a kick quickly, the kick can lead to a blowout like the one at Macondo. Like any natural material, rock will break or fracture under enough pressure. If the pressure of the mud column above a rock formation is high enough to fracture that formation, drilling mud will flow out of the well bore and into the formation instead of returning to the surface. This causes what is known as lost returns or lost circulation. Okay. I will stop it here and go back to the Okay. So what is the pore pressure? Anyone? 
it is the pressure uh, at the bottom of the well. Okay, it is the pressure exerted by the fluid by the rock by the rock inside the rock. Okay, this is the pore pressure. Okay, if the mud weight is less than the pore pressure, let me open the whiteboard. Okay, we are talking about two things here: pore pressure and fracture pressure. First. Let's talk about the pore pressure. As you saw in the video, pore pressure is pressure exerted by the fluid inside the, the pore space in the rock. In the rock. This is the, yes. Uh, is the pore pressure the same as the reservoir pressure? Yes, yes. Yes, or reservoir pressure is also exerted through the, because of the fluid inside the rock or pore space. Okay, then we had another term. We call it the fracture pressure. How you how would you define the fracture pressure? It is when the uh, pore pressure is more than the rock pressure. It is the mud pressure higher than the, the rock deformation. It means that pressure that can fracture or you know, fracture the, the rock. Or you can say break the rock in simplest form. For example, right now, most of you are using the laptop. Most of, for example, I'm typing. So my force on the laptop is very less. But if I increase, you know, hit it, it will break. So the force that actually break my laptop is the that fracture force. It's, it's that simple. So now we have two words, pore pressure and the fracture pressure. Okay, it is the mud pressure, not the reservoir fluid pressure. Look at the words I'm talking. I'm here talking about the mud pressure. Okay, and here I'm talking about the fluid pressure exerted by the, or you can say pore pressure. So they are two different. This is by the fluid inside the rock in the reservoir. This is by the mud pressure, which is we are circulating from the surface, from the using the mud pits or mud tanks and circulation system. This is from there. And this one is already existing in the rock. Okay. So this mud pressure should not be high enough that it can go and break the formation down. Okay. And this should not be that less enough that it can cause a kick. Now we, there's a question like, for example, what is a kick? Kick, you can say a simplest form, uncontrolled of the wire fluid in the portal towards the surface. So for example, now let's make a diagram also. We have and we are exactly at this point. We are doing the drilling process. That's the diagram. Now, this pore pressure actually is here inside the reservoir. Okay, the moment you drill it there, the fluid from here will try to will try to go inside the well. It will try to go there. And which fluid it is, it is this one, pore pressure, which is inside the rock. Then we have uh, another flu uh, pressure which is coming down here 
through the drill string using the circulation system. This is uh, mud pressure. Okay. Now you see we have two pressure, like for example, two people are fighting with each other. Okay. So we have two pressure, they have to fight with each other also. What we want, we want to keep this mud pressure more than this formation pressure. Okay, or core pressure, because if not, then the kick will occur. So mud pressure, this mud pressure has to be higher than the pore pressure. So we can write here, mud pressure has to be higher than pore pressure. Otherwise, it cannot. This is the statement number one. The statement number two says, mud pressure has to be lower than the fracture pressure. Otherwise, formation will break down and loss circulation will occur. What is loss circulation? Anyone can explain what is loss circulation? Loss circulation, for example, this mud which is going down is supposed to go up, but it's not going up. It actually is going there. It actually is lost there. So the mud, when I talk about the loss circulation, This loss circulation I'm talking about this. Exactly this one when the fluid is lost inside the formation. Yes. So two many concepts here. First one is the pore pressure. What is pore pressure? Another one is what is fracture pressure. Then we talked about what is kick here. And we said, then we said, based on fracture, core, and kick, we said two uh, comments. One comment is this mud pressure, which we are talking about, it should be higher than the pore pressure, otherwise the kick will occur. And other thing we said that this mud pressure should be, has to be lower than the fracture pressure, otherwise formation will break down and loss circulation will occur. We like this one. So we don't want the loss circulation and we don't want the kick. So you can say that the, kick and loss circulation are not desirable. We don't want that in simple words. Okay. Now let's go back to this slide and I showed you one graph here. Now this graph represents the same story as what we talked before in the whiteboard. Okay. Now, as you can see here that we have uh, this line. Now, here is the depth. For example, when we are at zero, our pressure probably is, you know, here we are talking about the specific gravity of the drilling mud. Or also this place you can describe as the mud pressure also, or the reservoir pressure or mud pressure. You can define in two, three different kinds of graphs. So all kinds of graphs are available with the drilling fluids or drilling engineers at their office and the site, at head office, everywhere, wherever they are monitoring. So basically they make two lines first. First is the red line, it shows the pore pressure versus depth. And that's what we call it the pore pressure gradient. So this line actually showing as we are deep, drilling deeper, how much is the pore pressure? As you can see that when you drill at 2500, we need the specific gravity of drilling mud, which is around, you can say 1.1 or something. Or as we are drilling deeper pore pressure, is around okay we have a question here uh, maybe what should we do if we get a point that we have no different two types of rock higher one sand and bottom one hard rock because if we decrease the pressure we cannot continue drilling a very very good question a very very good question uh, mr govan has asked what if the pore pressure and the fracture pressure they both are similar because if you increase the pressure a bit higher, the rock will fracture. If you go a little bit less, 
you will uh, actually uh, the pore pressure there may there may uh, kick me can occur you can say right if this is the question mr govin like the pressure window is too narrow yeah. yeah yeah the sound is not clear probably your internet is not good enough or also my, my voice maybe is not clear to you also it's the same problem maybe you need to change your place for the next class okay so the question here is uh, i will get back to your answer i have a very good answer for this one but let me first explain what i was trying to explain then i will go to the, that one that concept you are a bit advanced than what I, I was trying to teach right now okay so what i was saying that we have this fracture pressure here oh, sorry pore pressure and this chart actually showing the depth versus pore pressure for example if we are at the depth of 2000 what is the pore pressure let's say we are at the depth of 4000 so what is the e pressure or at 3500 what is the pore pressure so this chart actually is for that as you see that after the 2000 there is a rapid change in the pore pressure is going on here okay then we have another line here which is the uh, fracture pressure okay fracture pressure is the pressure at which the if your mud is going on it can fracture the formation okay if your mud is the higher than this one it will be so this is the fracture pressure at which the rock can break down this one okay now as a drilling engineer as I, as we discussed before we have to keep the mud pressure above the pore pressure. here you see this black line showing the mud pressure or mud weight here in a specific gravity the mud weight has to be higher than the pore pressure okay it has to be less than the fracture pressure because if this mud weight is less than pore pressure kick will occur if this mud weight is higher than the fracture pressure again loss circulation will happen and it's a big problem for us so we don't want it that's why the reservoir the drilling engineers they always keep this chart in their lab and they are always following the mud pressure and they make sure that the mud pressure has to be between them okay now let me get back to the whiteboard and answer the question of mr govin that what if the both are similar situation for example now we are making a chart again similar kind of chart here This is the depth here, we said, and this is the pressure. Pressure. Now, we have the depth. The chart goes something like this. Okay. Then we have the, from the surface, this, is, this represents the pore pressure. This line, four pressure. Then we have another one, which represents fracture pressure. Now as I said before, we have to keep the mud pressure above the pore pressure, okay, and lower than the fracture pressure. So mud pressure above than the pore pressure. And mud pressure has to be less than the fracture pressure. This is what we want. Now if you look at this picture it is very very hard to keep the keep it especially in this area you notice this area is very narrow the window is very narrow okay there's high chance that either you will do the kick you will get a kick or you'll get the loss circulation high chance very narrow window Remember what we are trying to do, we are trying to keep the mud pressure between the these two. So the mud pressure actually will follow something like this. 
a line in between them somewhere. But till we reach here, now here's the problem. What should we do here? Their window here is very narrow. There's a big chance that kick will occur. There's a big chance that refractor will occur. If kick will occur, people can die at this surface. If loss circulation occurs, you will lose a lot of money. So what we do here? So in order to have such narrow situation, we have two options. Casing. Okay, we, we go for a small section and we case it. We put the pipe and we cement it and then we proceed so that uh, it does not fracture or do the loss circulation. So small uh, sections of casings we do there. Casing is a pipe that we inject in the, put in the well board in order to protect the well. This is the first option we have. Second pressure, we call it the manage pressure drilling. Okay, manage pressure drilling is a new technology that we use and uh, its purpose is to handle this narrow window in the managed pressure drilling. And managed pressure drilling is actually a, another topic and we will talk about it in the in the later on slide. But for now, just understand that we have two options. One of them is the casing. The other one is the managed pressure drilling. Yes, yeah, that's the problem. But that's not really a big problem there, the casing shoe problem. But because we do not keep the pressure that high that it can fracture. There are weak points, but we do not go that high. We do not keep the mud pressure that high so that it causes the problem of this one. So basically we go for the managed pressure drilling when we have a high risk. This weak point is still is in between both of them. The, as Mr. Burzi said that there is a chance of uh, loss circulation just below the casing point. Where's the case? Because there, may, there's a chance of weak formation. And, uh, but that weak area still is in between both of them. Above the pore pressure, less than the pressure. So there's not really a big trouble there. But big trouble start when both are very narrow and it is not cased well, all the section, then we are in trouble here at this point. So that's the problem here. Okay. So we don't yeah. want, yes. Um, would you have a case where the pore pressure is higher than the fracture pressure? And we have, that, yes, that, we have the situation when both are the same. We have, the, and in that case, we have the managed pressure drilling. So now, okay, let me explain managed pressure drilling in the next slide what it is to give you an idea what I'm talking about. So in the managed pressure drilling, let's say this is the surface, and uh, what we do, we have this rig structure here. There's a lot of research available also on this managed pressure drilling. You can this is the normal conventional drilling that we do. In this thing, what we say that the the fluid we are circulating the drilling mud uh, inside the drill string. It comes out from the nozzles of the bit from here, from here, and then it goes back to the surface. It goes back to the surface. And then from here, we have the, we have the pipe mud return line. mud return line and it goes to the shield shift. Okay, now you all agree with me on this diagram that I made and as I explained that there's a drilling mud which is going through the drill string, from the drill string through the bit nozzles, from there the annular space comes out through the mud return line, goes to the shade shifter, clean it up and goes back. But there is one thing that we didn't talk about it, that it is an open system. It means it can, uh, it's an open air. It's not a closed system for like a vacuum. 
okay we call it an open system it is an open system means that the mud which is returning we are directly sending the mud pits shale shakers are open the you can like open to environment and so on okay that's the situation in the uh, in the open system this is called an open system and it's again it's a closed loop but open system closed loop means it is shale shaker will clean it up and then it will go back through the from the shale shaker it, after cleaning it will go back to the there so it's a closed loop system okay but is an open system it can react with the environment shale shaker sends the petting to the mud pit shale shaker are quite open also at the same time but here in the mud return line it's a quite open system but when we have the narrow kind of situation narrow window of pore pressure mud we don't do that we have then another equipment that we place here now i will draw another picture here from the mud mpt okay now at this point we put one equipment we call it a rotary control valve rotary control valve or we call it rcv in simple word purpose of this rotary control valve is to control the annular pressure in the previous one we are in this kind of system we are not controlling annular pressure it just comes out it just it just come out and goes to shell shaker and so on but in this one in the rotary mode in this this system is called the mpd system manage pressure drill. we are managing the pressure manage pressure drill mpt what we are doing here we are controlling controlling mud pressure okay uh, let's take the example of cola okay now if you have the can of cola coca cola or pepsi let's say if you shake it your the cap is still closed from the top okay what will happen actually nothing will happen whatever the pressure the gas is generating inside the pepsi is still inside as long as you open the cap as long as there is so it's like a cap here we put the cap so you can say that here it's it is like a like a cap of that and what it does it creates the back pressure it create because it is closed from the top it creates the back pressure Okay, when it creates the back pressure, then the pressure of this annular profile is maintained, maintained, and it do not go. Even if the kick will happen, nothing can change because the from above there is a back pressure is created, and uh, uh, that's why the kick will not happen. On the other side, we can manage, we can keep a very low uh, mud pressure also, which will not fracture the formation. So, what mud pressure MPD does actually? What MPD do? control the annular profile we can have less mud pressure so that formation will not fracture okay. that's the overall mpd so this is the mpd where we control this annular pressure this is the conventional one where we do not control we have mud return we have shell shaker and so on okay now in order to show you how the mpd looks like let me share one video also with you with that so it will clarify your concept in a very nice way then. hope you got some idea about it like how we control it but let me show you share with you much, much managed pressure okay now
Weatherford is a very good company which actually do this job. Pressurized mudcap drilling is one of the four variations of managed pressure drilling, or MPD, recognized by the International Association of Drilling Contractors. Pressurized mudcap drilling is used to mitigate extreme fluid losses, commonly found in highly depleted and naturally fractured formations. In these extreme situations, where lost circulation techniques don't work or are too expensive, pressurized mudcap drilling allows drilling to continue without interruption. Because pressurized mudcap drilling is engineered to inject all the drilling fluid, cuttings and produce gas into the formation, total fluid loss and kicks are controlled. As a result, difficult or previously undrillable wells are now drillable. By reducing non-productive time associated with fluid loss and major gas influx, pressurized mudcap drilling significantly lowers drilling costs. Costs are also reduced by using water as a sacrificial drilling fluid, instead of pumping expensive fluid systems and lost circulation materials into the formation. In addition, disposal expenses are eliminated because cuttings are injected into the formation along with the drilling fluid. Equally important, pressurized mudcap drilling reduces risk and improves safety because pipe can be tripped and rotated while fluid is pumped down the annulus. Gas percolation and bottom hole pressure are quickly indicated through observation of pressure differences between the reservoir and hydrostatic column and simply managed by adjusting an annular fluid cap. Pressurized mudcap drilling first places a column of fluid in the casing, drill pipe annulus. This fluid cap is shut in with a Weatherford rotating control device. The dual element RCD is easily installed and made this is the equipment I'm talking about, the RCV or RCV. Maintained to provide a pressure tight barrier and diversion capability in the annulus. The fluid cap is kept in an underbalanced state with a predetermined surface pressure of 200 to 500 psi. A sacrificial brine or water is pumped through the drill string at normal rates to clean around the bottom hole assembly. Blocked by the fluid cap above it, this sacrificial fluid, along with produced formation fluids and cuttings, is injected into fractures or vugs in the formation. Because all the drilling fluid is injected, a large water supply is generally required for pressurized mudcap drilling. Ideal pressurized mudcap drilling well candidates are those where a high or total loss of returns and gas kicks are experienced. These kick loss conditions typically occur in highly fractured or vugular formations where loss rates exceed 120 barrels per hour. But with pressurized mudcap drilling, these losses mean good injectivity, which is an attribute. Wells without these loss characteristics are drilled using another MPD variation, such as constant bottom hole pressure. Here's the typical scenario encountered with conventional drilling. While drilling ahead, a zone of low pressure is encountered. Pressure exerted by the drilling mud is higher than the formation pressure and it begins to enter existing fractures and vugs. The driller's first response is to slow the circulation rate and add lost circulation material. If that fails, mud weight is reduced in an effort to match the formation pressure. If this mitigation is successful, drilling continues until a second set of fractures is encountered. Again, mud weight exceeds formation pressure and fluid losses begin. The loss of fluid reduces the hydrostatic pressure and when it is lower than the formation pressure, gas enters the well bore and causes a kick. Lost circulation material is added in an effort to seal the lower fractures which allows the mud weight to be increased in an effort to control the kick from the upper fracture zone, resulting in a new round of fluid loss in the upper zone. This cycle defines a typical kick loss scenario that creates many problems. It increases risk to personnel, equipment and the well. Fighting the well adds to non-productive time. Costs are increased because of lost fluids and circulation materials. Differential sticking is more likely. Isolating trouble zones with casing reduces hole size, 
and ultimately, these problems may need to loss of the hole. In the pressurized mud cap drilling process, a much different response provides a safer, more cost-effective solution. As illustrated in this scenario, as soon as the fractures are encountered and drilling fluid is lost, the well annulus is closed with the RCD. Sacrificial fluid is pumped down the drill pipe and a fluid cap, often just plain seawater, is injected into the annulus or circulated into place via the casing. With the casing shut in, the weight of the fluid cap is balanced with the formation pressure by managing the surface pressure. Casing pressure and gas migration is quickly and accurately managed through application of surface pressure and by adding or removing fluid from the top of the fluid cap. To continue drilling, fresh water or brine is pumped down the drill pipe. With the annulus closed and pressure balanced, the fluid can't return up the annulus, so it finds the path of least resistance, which is the lower pressure in the first fracture. As this sacrificial fluid is injected, it carries away drilling cuttings and any produced fluids or gas. Reservoir conditions do not affect the fluid injection rate. Drilling continues, and a second lost circulation zone is soon encountered. Because the pressure is higher in this deeper section, the upper set of fractures continues to take the sacrificial drilling fluid and cuttings, and drilling continues without delay. In this manner, pressurized mudcap drilling solves one of the most difficult We at Halliburton define managed pressure drilling as a drilling optimization solution that can greatly reduce well construction costs and underbalanced drilling is a reservoir enhancement solution that helps improve production. Managed pressure drilling solution allows you to drill with minimal overbalanced pressure. To drill near the lowest pressure boundary, we reduce mud densities required to control the well bore. Managed pressure drilling can help you reach previously undrillable targets, eliminate casing strings, lower mud costs, reduce non-productive time associated with pressure events, and minimize formation damage while allowing precise control of the well bore. In overbalanced drilling, the well bore is open to the atmosphere and Now, as I said, in the conventional drilling, we have an open system. The mud goes back, and in this one, we put one equipment called RCD here. As I Drilling fluids flow freely across the shaker to the return pit. Managed pressure drilling solution creates a closed loop system. It is a managed environment that allows precise control of bottom hole pressure and timely detection and mitigation of kicks and mud losses. Following the model measure optimized process, every managed pressure drilling project in Halliburton starts with candidate well selection. We use detailed hydraulic models to assess the operational pressure window and the possibility of drilling with managed pressure. Pre-job modeling helps us choose the appropriate drilling fluids, select equipment configuration, and develop project procedures and contingencies. A typical managed pressure drilling system contains several key components. The rotating control device is an essential part of every MPD system that serves to divert flow away from the rig floor. It complements the rig standard blowout preventer stack. The rotating control device forms a friction seal around the drill pipe or Kelly, and this is what creates a closed loop drilling system. Halliburton offers rotating control devices rated to static pressure of 1,000, 2,500, and 5,000 psi. Their compact design ensures they fit under most drilling rigs without modifications or jacking, and allows for better maneuverability and faster rig up times. For high pressure wells, we deploy rotating control devices with dual stripper option that create a secondary barrier for safer operations. The choke is the pressure regulator of the managed pressure drilling system. It serves to control the wellhead pressure to a set point. Its opening is constantly adjusted to account for changes in flow rate through the choke to maintain the desired bottom hole pressure. 
Our chokes exist in various trim sizes and Halliburton specialists will select the appropriate configuration based on the detailed analysis of your reservoir conditions. Halliburton offers both manual and automatic chokes. The economical manual choke allows the rig personnel to control back pressure manually with a hydraulic control panel or using our software. The automatic choke is controlled by electronic pressure monitoring equipment. It has the speed and precision unmatched by any human choke operator. An automatic choke is your best bet when the pore pressure and fracture gradients are very close and there is little room for error. To manage wellhead pressure throughout the drilling operation, even when rig pumps are off, it is critical to maintain flow through the chokes. Typical managed pressure drilling utilizes a back pressure pump to provide fluid supply and adequate flow for maintaining the chokes. Halliburton's innovative new rig pump diverter replaces the back pressure pump. With a rig pump diverter, there is no need to stop the rig pumps during connections because this device serves to reroute the mud flow from the standpipe to the chokes. Its small footprint, ease of installation, and very modest electrical power requirements make it ideal for offshore operations. Both the back pressure pump and the flow diverter can be operated manually or in automatic mode. Once the well has reached target depth, we employ a tripping process to place a hevels up the end. Managed pressure drilling is taken to the next level with poor fracture and collapse pressure prediction and precise real-time pressure measurements. Halliburton specialists use robust software packages for poor pressure modeling, including the drill works predict from Landmark and the drilling fluids graphics from Bayroid. Managed pressure drilling personnel implement the hydraulic models at one second intervals. For real-time measurements, we offer a whole suite of Sperry logging while drilling sensors, including the GeoTap formation pressure. Okay, actually, these two videos are not as good as I was expecting, but I have some very good videos on MPD on my hard drive. So I'll find them and put them along with today's lecture somewhere also. So basically, uh, Victor, Victor, if my sound could, I have a question, please. Yes, your sound is fine. Uh, what are the tools that directly on the well, uh, please, in this video? At it's the beginning tool. of the video, yes. uh, you showed uh, a tool that directly on the uh, well. Can yes. you uh, tell us uh, what is this tool, please? RCV, it's equipment called RCV, rotary control valve, or RCD, we call it also. RCV, or we call it RCD. Okay, what it is doing, we are putting it on the hole above hole okay it is it works like a cap okay and what it does actually it is controlling the prof the annular pressure the pressure which is caused here okay there's a pressure inside the drill pipe which is coming from the mud pump but on return on return when it is returning to the surface this annular profile before we were not controlling the annular pressure Whatever the mud with cuttings were coming through the mud return line, we were sending it to the shell shaker. That was the conventional method. But in this one, we said that we have we are putting one more device, rotary control device. This device, as you saw in the video, is red color one. This one actually has a seal inside it. It can block or put the cap on the bore annular pressure also. And when you put the cap on a pressurized pie hole, or bottle or anything, it creates a back pressure. So actually a back pressure is created here. A back pressure is created using, back pressure is created using the RCV, using the RCV. So the, when this back pressure is created, we can reduce the mud pressure and this back pressure actually helps us to, to drill further. As you saw in those videos, these videos were very complicated. I will send you some very nice one, which will clarify your concept of the MPD like animation, how it works. Actually. So you got the idea. So RCV is equipment is perfect to put the cap on the borehole, on the, especially in the annual, on the annular space. Yes. You got it? Is my sound clear to you? Yes, thank you, Doctor. Okay. And further, I will send you one video. I have very nice video somewhere in my laptop or my hard drive. I'll find it up and put it there for the mud managed pressure drilling. Along with one, I have one presentation also. This is a drilling two topic actually. In drilling engineering two, we have a complete chapter on managed pressure drilling. 
So I will take this stuff from there and put it here for you to understand what it is. But I'm very happy that you brought up this question and which is very realistic and a very good question. So we will end up today's lecture here and we'll talk about the laboratory in the next lecture then. Okay. And uh, I, will, I will tell you in the next lecture what to do. I'm planning some project on drilling now. So we will talk about it in the next lecture. Okay, any other question for now? Okay, okay, then see you in the next lecture. And if you have more questions, you can write me down. My voice is lower than the... I need to check why my voice is not clear enough. Actually, my voice is lower because of because I put the directly uh, my laptop voice directly to the you have the Zoom video calling. That's why the video voice is clear. So I have two options of voice here in this Zoom. One is directly from the computer. One is the mic. So I put both of them. So one is directly coming from the computer, which has better. And of course, the mic is small. Uh, is voice is smaller than the other one. But anyway, if you face any more questions, you can write me up and we can talk about it. Also, I will upload this lecture online so you can have the video lecture. Okay, thank you for the comments and we'll, I'll check this mute and mic volume later on by recording. Okay, so see you in the next lecture then. Any question? Thank you, sir. Okay, see you then. See you then.